Hi, everyone. Welcome to our first installation of the Middletown Township Public Schools uh, Parent University. We're going to be offering a series of 30 minute or so information sessions for you to give you an overview of what's going on in our district from the curriculum, instruction, and special services departments. My name is Dr. John Kerrigan. I'm the District Director of Curriculum and Instruction. And with me this evening is uh, Mrs. Cindy Wilson. She is one of our pre-K through five supervisors of curriculum, and she has great expertise in the area of preschool. So she will be sharing some of her, her thoughts and recommendations with us tonight in her presentation. So without further ado, I'll turn it over to Mrs. Wilson. Hi everyone, and welcome to our first Parent University. I am Cindy Wilson, and I believe Tara Garzon may be on this call with us. Um, I am supervisor for pre-K to five, and I'm so excited because this is my dream job. Tara is the supervisor for um, pre-K five and she's responsible for the special education department. So I'm so happy that you joined us this evening. And tonight we're gonna spend some time on, you know, fostering independence and how important that is for children. And I'm just gonna give you a little background as to what our program is, what our philosophy, what our vision for your children are. So Mr. Kerrigan, do we have many participants on this call? There's two people right now. Oh, where is everybody? They're just ringing. Okay. All right. So we're just going to keep going. It will be recorded and someone can catch up. So um, so we have a vision for our learners. And the vision of MTPS Preschool is to create a learning community where all involved are respected as individuals and are encouraged to actively participate in order to achieve their highest potential. And it aligns with Middletown's um, vision and mission, and it is a learner-centered environment. Um, our, our goals are to create a self, a safe and emotionally secure learning environment, build relationships to promote the success for every child, and to promote lifelong learners. And so we're talking about our youngest learners, but they are capable of so much. Our philosophy of learning embraces that children are active learners from birth, they learn through play, and that we look to educate the whole child. So you'll see maybe some of your little people in our photos because I have had the pleasure of being in our classrooms, in and out of these preschool classrooms, and there's a lot of amazing things going on. But I want you to know that children are natural and active learners from birth and they need a variety of hands-on learning experiences where they can have many opportunities to act with, interact with people, materials, objects, and their environments. The main vehicle for their learning is their play, and it's in, done in a print-rich, language-rich environment. The teachers are facilitators, and they impose a lot of intentional teaching on what is happening in the classroom. So they build many opportunities throughout the day where children are learning. And the beauty of it is, is they don't even know they're learning. So tonight, I want to spend some time thinking about our steps to independence and facilitating independence and your child, by the nature of them leaving you, maybe they're getting on a school bus or maybe you're driving them to school or walking and they enter that big building every day. And the fact that they're separating from you is a step towards their independence. So independence contributes to the development of self-esteem identity and well-being. Doing something for yourself is a powerful sense of achievement and success. One of our goals in the program is to support the development of these skills throughout the day. Preschoolers accomplish these, gain their independence by accomplishing these skills. So whether they're in circle or they're free play or they're having snack or just entering the classroom gives us the opportunity to develop those skills. Um, I'm sure you're seeing it at home in many different levels because our children come with many different levels and there is no great expectation that children should be, be doing this at any set time in their own development. It is unique to each of them. Um, 
So our active learning is where we believe that children learn through a variety of experiences and interactions with people in their environment. But each element of our active learning, whether it's child language and thought, choice, adult scaffolding, um, or the daily routine, but all opportunities for us to explore that self-help and independence skills. When a child communicates through language or gestures or signs, it's a way of them asserting their um, independence. They want us to know something, right? So um, we try to scaffold that language and get them to ask for what they need. So we pay attention to those cues that, that, that children give us. So um, there's opportunity for choice because gosh, oh, oh, let me go back. Choice allows students to make a decision and act on it. So there are many variety of times during the day where children are provided with a choice. Um, John, where would you like to work today? Uh, what toys would you like to use? What book would you like to see? And so when we respond to the choice that they make, as an adult, we've empowered them because we've acknowledged their choice and we're allowing them to work on it. Adult, adult scaffolding means if a child is struggling with an independent self-help task, such as opening a zipper, you, the, the attentive adult will pay attention to where they are in that process and support them to the point where they can be successful. So you don't want to just take it and do it for them. You want to do it to the point where then they can achieve success. So that's where the adult scaffolding comes in. So you do that in all areas of their learning. But it's really important to let them have a little bit of a struggle, but not so much that they get frustrated. So whether they're pulling off their sock, whether they're taking off their jacket, whether they're unzipping, unzipping their backpacks, and all of those things take time. So I was in a room the other day and I encouraged someone to use their language because he looked at me and he handed me something and I said, oh, do you need help? I said, tell me, help me. And I gave him the sign for help me. And he was able to say, help me please. So I twisted the top just enough so that he could be successful and take it off. And then I said, who did it? And he said, I did. So that sense of accomplishment for him and supporting that self-esteem was just critical for him at that moment. And so that's what we look for as a, a, the, that the um, attentive adults in these, in these children's lives. So that scaffolding is important. We want to make sure the task we're asking the child to do is developmentally appropriate and that they have the skill set to support what it is that they want to do. So you know, you, you say who did it and they said, I did is just a real sense of accomplishment. So we, we have the opportunities during cleanup time, hand washing, um, where your children are doing these things throughout the day. So these skills become more adept, the more develop, develop they become. But there are things that they can do and should be able to do and listen, all of this stuff takes time and it creates a mess and it can be ugh, like a lot of times we're in a rush, but in our preschool environments, we make sure we kind of slow down and let them have the time that they need. Um, I know it's quicker for us to want to do things for them, but we have to really sit back and let the process happen. Um, I was on a call with the state today. And one of the areas that they're really looking at is this independent piece. So we really want to make sure we are fostering that, those self-help and independent skills and ultimately, you know, giving them a good sense of self. And wow, how powerful is that, that they can do things? And like, and sometimes they'll argue with you and say, me do, me do, me do, or I wanna do it, or I wanna do it. And you really let, the, let them have to be able to try those, all of those tasks. Um, we provide um, a picture schedule of our daily routine just because the schedule helps the child to know what's coming. Um, and ideally, in our lives, our busy lives, it's hard to do that at home. But in a classroom, giving a child a picture schedule of the day lets them know what's coming. It, it does a couple things. It lets them know where they are. It lets them know what's coming. And it puts them into control as to know what's next. 
And again, in a, in a, in, at home, it's not often as easy to do those things, but some of the things you can do is to do little picture schedules for certain times of your day. So um, simple routines such as establish a set time for bedtime routine. So we're gonna set, establish a set time, we're gonna take a bath, we're gonna put on our PJs, we're gonna brush our teeth, bedtime story and go to bed. So this might be too much for some of our preschoolers. So you would wanna reduce that. So if you're having a particular difficult time with your bedtime routine, you can break this down. Some, some children may only benefit from having two slides. First, we're gonna take a bath and then we're going to um, put our PJs on. So um, your child can help you to put a check mark next to those things as they happen. And it definitely is a powerful tool as simple as it may be for you to um, you know, engage your child in helping that to promote that routine. Again, it's I, I, I'm a mom of three boys, they're men by now. I've been doing this early childhood piece for a very long time. Um, and I know that some of these very simple um, um, procedures and routines can help you in the long run. So you will see our students, these are real from this year, um, students very engaged in their learning, children making choices, children working together, um, you know, just to um, establish their self. And you know, the social piece is huge too, but we can spend a whole nother evening on that social piece. Um, of their learning and development. But I, I have to tell you that Middletown's preschool program is really an exceptional place and um, it's definitely a happy place. And in the long term, when you allow for them to have these, um, the time to accomplish these tasks, you really are supporting them in the long run. And you know, the, the long term payoff is greater than the, than the, than so, you know, we're going to do this today and you're going to pull off one sock today and then you're going to pull off another sock. And then by the time we're done, you're going to be able to undress yourself and then dress yourself and going to feel really good about it. And you know what, parents, you know, I always pick my battles with my boys. Like, if you want to wear cowboy boots to school and it's, it's, you know, 70 degrees out, wear your cowboy boots, you know, pick your battles, pick your struggles, but really supporting them where they are and bringing them to the next step is the goal. And I have to tell you that they are, you would be so proud of the level of independence, regardless of their ability, where they are in this, on the developmental continuum, they are really making progress. Um, I mean, I don't see any tears in classrooms. I see happy, engaged, kids, uh, little ones, littles, threes, um, on the road to really being quite independent. Um, I attached a link here um, for you because I believe this is uh, will be um, recorded and will be on our website for you to go to just to see how you can nurture, um, you know, the sense of self. But um, I really did fly through this, but I just think there's some very basic things we need to think about when we're dealing with our children. And in our, in our schools, we really have the opportunity to take the time to develop these self-help and independent skills. And you as the parents have the opportunity as well. And anything that they do presents is, is something new for them. So embrace the, the newness, embrace the novelty, talk to them about their day. Um, they may not wanna talk about it. And sometimes those sheets come home during the day and you might wanna say, Oh, I noticed you were in the block area. Did, were you working with someone? Um, did you build something special? Really take a minute to let them know that their presence in school was important and that their work is important. And their work is, their play is their work. And when I talked about intentional teaching earlier, I, I wanna talk a little bit about what that might look like. So we set the classroom up in such a way that everything in the room has a purpose. And there's nothing greater than a child choosing an activity because the motivation is there and he has the interest or she has the interest. So we can take any tool that they use in the classroom, any toy, any activity, and we can make a learning moment out of it. 
whether we're labeling colors or whether we're having a pretend phone call or whether we're feeding babies, I can know what that child knows in a matter of minutes um, just by engaging in conversation. If the child is nonverbal, then we wanna to talk to the child about what they're doing. Oh, you have the baby, you're feeding the baby. So we're doing a lot of that ongoing intentional teaching when they're engaged in that, what looks like free play. The other important piece to that in fostering their independence and self-help is that cleanup piece because everything in that classroom is labeled, everything has a place and, every, and everyone helps to clean up. If you have a child whose attention isn't that great for cleaning up, you let them pick one thing to put away and then you're going to help them pick it up. The important thing is that they started an activity, they work through it, and then they bring it to completion by putting it away. And sometimes you have to make a race out of it. Like, let me help you put this away and who can do it faster? But again, it's that sense of you did it, you cleaned up, even if they only put one thing away. So our reactions to their successes, it's really about their work. And if you wanna be specific, be specific about what they did, not just good job. You did a great job helping me put these blocks away. Um, uh, so very specific with your language. So, I mean, Mr. Kerrigan, do we have, I know we're not supposed to do a Q&A, but if we only have a few people on the call, um, something we might think about doing. It's just us two right now. <laughs> Come on. All right, well, listen, then I'm not gonna continue. If anyone would like more information or if they go back and view this, if you have any topics you'd like to address during this parent forums, please list suggestions in the chat box or email Tara Garzone or myself. Did you stop recording, Mr.